the catalan numbers constitute one of the most universal and most studied sequences in mathematics hundreds of problems have the catalan numbers as their answers the online encyclopedia of integer sequences or oeis states that the entry on catalan numbers is probably the longest entry and rightly so let's explore the amazing catalan numbers we'll define the catalan numbers prove a recurrence relation survey the history of the numbers and derive a generating function and explicit formula first of all what are the catalan numbers we define the nth catalan number c sub n as the number of ways to divide an n plus two gone into triangles to get a feel for this definition let's consider a few cases we start with n equals zero so we have a two gone Houston, we have a problem. Two gons don't have triangles in them. Well, for the sake of this definition, there is one way to divide a two gon into triangles. The reason will become clear later. For n equals one, there is one way to divide a three gon into triangles. For n equals two, there are two ways. For n equals three, there are five ways. And for n equals four, there are 14 ways. So far, our sequence is one, one, two, five, 14. Mathematics is the science of patterns, so we want to find patterns for the sequence of Catalan numbers. Our ultimate goal is to find an explicit formula for the nth Catalan number in terms of n. No such formula is immediately obvious, but let's see if we can find a simpler pattern, a recurrence relation for the nth Catalan number based on smaller Catalan numbers. We start out with a triangulated n plus 2 gone and fix one of the polygon's edges, e. If we remove edge E, we are left with two distinct triangulated polygons that share one vertex, as shown in this diagram. Let the polygon clockwise from E have A plus 2 vertices, and the polygon counterclockwise from E have B plus 2 vertices. Note that order matters here, since the reverse order is a reflection, which is counted as distinct. Since the two polygons share one vertex, the sum of the numbers of their vertices is equal to the number of vertices of the polygon plus 1. So a plus b equals n minus 1. For each pair of non-negative integers a and b that sum to n minus 1, we have a configuration of two polygons that together form the n plus 2 gon. The number of triangulations in each configuration is c sub a times c sub b. Note that if a or b is 0, then we have an n plus 1 gone and a 2 gone, which we define to be two vertices connected by one edge. The number of triangulations in this case is c sub n minus 1. This is the reason we defined c sub 0 to be 1. So the total number of ways we can triangulate the original polygon is the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of c sub i times c sub n minus 1 minus i, with the initial condition c sub 0 equals 1. You probably wondered why we defined the Catalan numbers using polygon division. There are hundreds of other problems in which the Catalan numbers appear, so what's so special about this one? It turns out that this problem, which is called Euler's polygon division problem, was historically the original problem in which the Catalan numbers first appeared. Let's go on a brief tangent to explore the history and naming of the Catalan numbers. The first closed formula of the Catalan numbers was found through the collaboration of three great mathematicians and scientists of the 18th century, Leonhard Euler, Christian Goldbach, and Johann Andreas Ziegner. In 1751, Euler wrote a letter to Goldbach in which he described his polygon division problem. He defined the now called Catalan numbers as the number of triangulations of an n plus 2 gon and guessed a product formula as well as the corresponding generating function. In his reply, Goldbach observed that Euler's generating function could be obtained from a specific quadratic equation. In the late 1750s, Euler wrote to Ziegner, suggesting the polygon division problem. Ziegner found and proved a recurrence relation for the sequence of numbers. Euler then realized that Ziegner's recurrence was the key to proving Goldbach's quadratic equation, from which the proof of the generating function and product formula followed. However, Euler did not publish a complete proof of his formula. Only 80 years later did Gabriel Lame publish the first complete proof. His work sparked the interest of a young mathematician named Eugène Charles Catalan, who became the first to find the modern standard formulas for the Catalan numbers. Throughout his career, Catalan intermittently returned to these numbers. The Catalan numbers were originally attributed to Ziegner and Euler. Catalan himself referred to them as Ziegner's numbers. The sequence received its modern name in 1968 when John Reardon published his book Combinatorial Identities, in which he used the name Catalan numbers. This is yet another unfortunate illustration of Stigler's Law of Eponymy, which states that no mathematical or scientific discovery is ever named after its original discoverer.
In fact, even Euler was not the first person to discover the Catalan numbers. That distinction belongs to the Mongolian mathematician Mingatu, whose book Quick Methods for Accurate Values of Circle Segments, written in the 1730s, included some trigonometric identities and power series involving Catalan numbers, and a recurrence relation for the Catalan numbers. Let's get back to the math and continue our quest to find an explicit formula, the overarching pattern for the Catalan numbers. Right now, we only have a recurrence relation that requires all of the previous Catalan numbers from c sub 0 to c sub n minus 1 in order to compute c sub n. This formula is much too labor intensive and greatly increases the probability of making a mistake. Ziegner himself made an arithmetic error in computing the 13th Catalan number in his paper on this recurrence relation. To find an explicit formula, we will use generating functions. A generating function is a nice way to show and manipulate a sequence of numbers. It is a formal power series in one variable where the nth term of the chosen sequence is the coefficient of the x to the nth term of the series. We say it is a formal power series because we have an infinite number of terms and we aren't going to plug in actual numerical values into our function. The variable x is just a placeholder, so we don't need to worry about whether the series converges. The generating function c of x for the Catalan numbers is c sub 0 plus c sub 1 times x plus c sub 2 times x squared plus c sub 3 times x cubed, and so on, or 1 plus x plus 2x squared plus 5x cubed, etc. To get from the recurrence relation to the generating function, we first multiply both sides of our recurrence by x to the nth power, and then sum over all non-negative integers n. The left-hand side of the equation is the generating function we want. The right-hand side of the equation looks a lot like the generating function squared. In the square of the generating function, the coefficient of x to the n is the sum from i equals 0 to n of c sub i times c sub n minus i. This is the same as the coefficient of x to the n plus 1 on the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is just x times the generating function squared plus a constant, which is the zeroth Catalan number. This is the quadratic equation that Goldbach found. Now we have a second pattern for the Catalan numbers. We just need to apply the quadratic formula to obtain a closed form for the generating function. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem again. The quadratic formula gives us two possibilities. Should we use the positive or negative sign? No big deal. We can find out by rewriting the square root as the one-half power of a binomial. If you've studied power series expansions in calculus, you might recognize this as a Taylor series centered at x equals 0. If you haven't studied those yet, or you're a bit rusty in calculus, don't worry. This is just the binomial theorem, generalized for real number powers. By evaluating the first few terms, we see that we have negative coefficients in the expansion. This tells us we need to use the negative sign, since our generating function should have positive coefficients. Now we have a closed form for our generating function, and we've completed the second to last step in our journey to the final pattern, the explicit formula. Now we have one last step, finding the actual explicit formula for the nth Catalan number. Remember, according to the definition of the generating function, we just need to find the formula for the coefficient of x to the n. First, we use the binomial theorem to find the coefficient of x to the n in the expansion of the square root. Notice that the 1 minus in front only cancels the constant term and makes all other terms have positive coefficients. The divided by 2x means that the coefficient of x to the n in the generating function is the coefficient of x to the n plus 1 in the binomial expansion divided by 2. After several standard algebraic manipulations involving factorials, we end up with a nice closed form. There are many possible different but mathematically equivalent expressions possible. Two of the most commonly used forms are 1 over the quantity n plus 1 times 2n choose n and 2n choose n minus 2n choose n plus 1. Now, it is much easier to calculate any Catalan number. As an example, the first 11 Catalan numbers from c sub 0 to c sub 10 can be easily calculated as 1, 1, 2, 5, 14, 42, 132, 429, 1430, 48, 62, and 16,796. We have reached our goal at last. We have a clear and beautiful pattern for the Catalan numbers.